Now my co-mates and brothers in exile. <laughs> Have not old custom made this life more sweet than that of painted pomp? Are not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? <laughs> sweet are the uses of adversity, which, like the toad, ugly and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. And this our life, exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in running brooks, sermons in stones, and <laughs> good in everything. I should not change it. <laughs> Come, shall we go kill us some venison? Although it irks me, the poor dappled fools being native burghers to this desert city, should in their own confines, with forked heads, have their round haunches gored. Indeed, my lord, the melancholy Jaquas grieves at that, and in that kind swears you do more usurp than doth your brother that hath banished you. Show me the place. I love to cope him in these sullen fits, for then he's full of matter. <laughs> I'll bring you to him straight. Can it be possible that no man saw them? It cannot be. Some villains of my court are of consent and sufferance in this. I cannot hear of any that did see her. The ladies or attendants of a chamber saw her a bed, and in the morning early they found the bed untreasured of their mistress. Hesperia, the princess's gentlewoman, confesses that she secretly o'erheard your daughter and her cousin much commend the parts and graces of the wrestler that did but lately foil the sinewy Charles, and she believes wherever they are gone that youth is surely in their company. Sent to his brother. Fetch that gallant hither. If he be absent, bring his brother to me. I will make him find him. Do this suddenly, and let not Google search and Inquisition quail to bring again these foolish runaways. 